Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the TX12, a budget-friendly compact open TX radio controller by Radio Master. In this video, I'm going to go over its features and specs, cover some basic functions and setup procedures, and give you my feedback after testing it out. In terms of packaging, inside the box along with the radio controller, you can find a quick start guide that covers its basic features. A 2.4 GHz linear antenna with an RPSMA connector for its internal radio transmission module, and a USB Type-C cable for connecting the radio controller to your computer in order to update its firmware and use it for controlling flight simulators. You should note that batteries are not included, and the best way to power it up is to obtain two 18650 lithium-ion batteries and use the included battery tray, and in addition, a micro SD card is not included as well, and even though, unlike most of the OpenTX radio controllers, the TX12 can function without it, I highly recommend to get one, as otherwise some features, including the voice option, are going to be missing. In terms of specs, the TX12 is a pretty compact radio controller, so here you can see what it looks like next to its bigger brother, the TX16S, next to its spiritual father, the Jumper T16, next to the Afro Sky X Lite and X9 Lite Pro, and next to the TBS Tango 2. Including two lithium-ion 18650 batteries, it weighs 488.6 grams, so it's significantly lighter than the TX16S. In addition, the TX12 features a single CC2500 multi-protocol radio chip, so unlike the TX16S, you won't be able to control gazillion protocols, and the supported protocols are limited to Corona, Hitech, Futaba SFHSS, FRSky D16 and D8, Radiolink, and Graupner HOTT. The transmitting power of the internal module is 20 dBm, which equals to 100 mW, the antenna gain of the included antenna is 2 dB, the working current of the radio controller is 160 mA at 8.4 volts, which means that you can use the radio controller for roughly 10 hours when using 18650 lithium ion batteries, the operating voltage range is between 6.6 .6 to 8.4 volts, the radio controller supports up to 16 channels depending on the receiver that you are going to use, it fully supports and comes pre-flashed with OpenTX firmware. It features a 2.45 inch 128 by 64 pixels monochrome LCD display. It's using potentiometer gimbals. The gimbals are using a 3mm thread and you can adjust the height of the sticks according to your preference. On its back side you can find a foldable plastic handle, a standard JAR module bay which is going to enable you to use it with plenty of external radio modules. A USB Type-C connector is conveniently located on the top side of the radio controller and will enable you to charge its internal batteries and also connect it to your computer. Next to it, you can find the RPSMA antenna connector of the internal radio module and you should be careful not to power up the radio controller without connecting an antenna. And over here, you can find a 3.5mm trainer port. Powering the radio controller is done using a 2S balance connector but due to size limitations, the battery bay can pretty much only accommodate the included battery tray. The micro SD card slot is located next to the 2S balance connector, and the SD card, which again is not included, needs to be inserted in the following manner. As for the available switches, on the sides of the radio controller you can find two sliders, which indicate their mid position. On the front of the radio controller you can find two momentary switches and two three position switches and on its top side you can find another two three-position switches. Turning on the radio controller is done by long pressing the power button, Welcome to OpenTX. and the reason you could hear the start sound is because I've already copied the micro SD card contents to the micro SD card, and in the description box down below you can find a link to these files. In case you are familiar with OpenTX, and especially if you have previously used Jumper or Radio Master radio controllers, you're going to feel pretty much at home, but in case you're not, let me give you a quick tour. Accessing the model menu is done by long pressing the model button, and then over here you can either select an existing model or create a new one by long pressing the scroll wheel button. The selected model is going to be marked with an asterisk next to it, and you can navigate between the different pages by short pressing the page forward or back buttons. In order to configure the internal multi-protocol model, move to the second page, scroll down to its bottom section, and then over here you can either turn off the internal model, which is useful in case you're going to use an external model, and in case you're going to use the internal multi-protocol model, you can set it to the different types and also the different subtypes. 
So for example, if I would like to bind an FRSky D8 receiver, I will need to set the type to FRSky, scroll down to the subtype, and then over here, set it to D8. Then in order to bind the receiver, put the receiver on binding mode and press the bind button. Pay attention that since the multi-protocol radio transmitter is not an official FRSky transmission module, you will need to set the frequency tune, and that's a topic for another video. So in case you are going to use an FRSky radio receiver, you will need to adjust this value, as otherwise you won't be able to achieve the maximum range. Basically in two words, in order to figure out this value, what you need to do is to bind a radio receiver, put it two meters away from the radio controller, while the radio receiver is bound, adjust the frequency tune to the highest value until you are going to lose connectivity with the radio receiver, mark down this value, then move all the way down to the lowest value, which again, you're going to lose radio connectivity with the radio receiver, then combine these two values, divide them by two, and set it as the frequency tune value. So for example, if I'm going to lose radio connectivity on minus 25 and 51, the results of combining these two values in 26 and dividing it by 2 will result in 13, which is the value that the frequency tune needs to be set to. As for accessing the system settings, it is done by long pressing the system button. On the first page, you can access different tools, including the Crossfire Configurator. On the second page, you can access the contents of the micro SD card. On the third screen, you can adjust the different system settings, including the volume, the haptic feedback, the different alarms, the backlight option, which by the way, the brightness by default is set to 20, set the voice language, units, and etc. On the next pages, you can manage the global functions, adjust the trainer mode, perform a sticks calibration, and on the last one, you can see the version of OpenTX, and this radio controller came pre-flashed with OpenTX 2.3.11. As for adjusting the trims of the sticks, it is done using these buttons which are located next to them, and once the trim is going to be centered, you're going to be notified and get a haptic feedback. Trim center. Now let's check the internal components of this radio controller. First, I'm going to unplug the battery, remove the micro SD card, and then screw the six Phillips screws, which are located on the back of the radio controller. Then after removing the sticker and two plastic parts, you'll be able to lift the back cover. As far as I can tell, everything looks well organized. The multi-protocol module is soldered to the main board, so changing it is not going to be a plug and play process, and as no flat cables are being used, changing the component is pretty easy. In addition, disassembling the radio controller will enable you to adjust the tension of the throttle using these two screws, adjust the tension of the springs, and switch between mode 2 to mode 1 by moving the metal bar along with the screws to the other side and move this spring to this position. For my taste, the throttle axis was a little bit too loose, so I had to tighten these two screws, but of course it's a matter of personal preference. Once you are done, put back the back cover, secure it using the six Phillips screws, assemble the two top plastic parts, and put back the macro SD card. As for charging the batteries, you can simply use the USB Type-C port. However, keep in mind that the charging procedure is going to be a little bit slow, so it should take you between 3 to 4 hours to fully charge two lithium-ion batteries, and the batteries are going to be charged to 4.2 volts a cell, so in case you are going to use LFE batteries, do not use the built-in charger. When the power button is red, it indicates that the batteries are being charged, and when the charging procedure is complete, it is going to be turned off. As for using the TX12 with flight simulators, first turn on the radio controller, then using the USB Type-C port, connect it to your computer, and set the mode to USB joystick. In case you would like to access the contents of the microSD card, set it to USB storage. Once the mode is selected, your flight simulator is going to recognize the radio controller as FRSky Taranis. But as you can see, the sticks are not calibrated, so you need to go through the calibration procedure, and as you can see, now everything is working properly. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the TX12, and after testing it out, I can tell you that this is a very comfortable radio controller, that it feels very good in the hands, the gimbals feel very precise, and it is suitable both for tumblers and pinchers, and in terms of value for money, priced at around $70, I think that this is probably the best radio controller that you can get for this price. So overall, in case you're a beginner who's looking for their first radio controller, or you just need a secondary travel-friendly option, 
I think that the TX12 is going to be a great choice, since besides not featuring whole sensor gimbals, it packs most of the features that the more expensive OpenTX Ready controllers offer. I do recommend, however, to upgrade the default sticks to these type of sticks by STP Hobby, especially if you are a pincher, since they are going to provide you with a more precise control. Now, by the way, along with the radio controller, I got these new radio receivers by Radio Master, which are available separately, and I plan to perform a range test soon using the TX12. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was informative enough, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.